to church. Can you just please welcome your neighbor or neighbors? Today we are beginning a series of teachings on the topic dealing with the flesh, dealing with the flesh. I don't know how you feel, but every time I hear teachings like this coming from the pulpit and, it, and every time I, I, I feel very excited, very, very excited about it. And I, and I, I, I tell myself that um, certainly God expects a lot from me. Because what we are hearing is not, is not it's, we should not take it at all for granted. The kind of teachings that we that we are getting, the, to whom much is given, much is expected. And so, for me personally, I, I have a sense of responsibility when I, you know, keep hearing from this pulpit God's word being dished out to us. And um, honestly, we are enjoying serving God. We are enjoying serving God. Because without, without God's word, there's really nothing to hold on to. But when you have God's word, then you have it. You have life. This uh, teaching happens to be one of my, my favorites. Like I said, from this pulpit, we, we are being fed all forms of diets. I mean, all forms of... The buffet is, uh, is something else. It's something else. The buffet is something else. But this teaching in particular has blessed me. I remember we first had it as the Sunday message. And thereafter, it was put into... Uh, print like this for us to become a Thursday uh, teaching. So we are blessed. We are blessed. Dealing with the flesh. Introduction. Even though the Bible is replete with references on the flesh, the modern day church does not seem to dwell much on it except for brethren in assemblies where holiness is solely emphasized. Unfortunately, sometimes to the exclusion of other biblical truths. A victorious Christian learns to deal with the flesh. A victorious Christian learns to deal with the flesh. If that's the only thing you, you hear this evening, you have heard well. A victorious Christian learns to deal with the flesh. Practically, it is about how to understand, how to treat, how to cope with, how to have a grip on, how to control the flesh. Some months back now, a member of this church was involved in something uh, she slapped somebody. She dealt with somebody physically. A woman who dealt with, with, with a man. And uh, the man happened to be a crazy man too. And you can imagine the outcome of such. And he ended up in a police station and everything scattered. <laughs> and the person was asked to cool her feet in the cell. And she was able to just get hold of a phone and called me. 
my first reaction was, you sleep there. How many days did it take you should stay there? I will multiply it. That was my first reaction. And um, of course, thereafter, we sought for help and got the person out of the place. And when she described what happened, as she was talking, I said, Don't, I know you. I, I know you. And interestingly, she was coming from church. Don't say, ah, we all, we all have our, our own issues too. <laughs> the flesh just took over. And after she had, you know, done what she wanted to do, ah, felt so bad. But the flesh had, you know. The first mention of the flesh in the KJV, we've been told many times from the pulpit here that the KJV is translated verse for verse, I mean, sentence for sentence. So it's very safe to use it to uh, mention things like this. is in Genesis 2, 21 to 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why is this important, dealing with the flesh? We just said that a victorious Christian life, a victorious Christian learns to deal with the flesh. It's because we have to deal with our flesh for life. That is the frightening thing about, about this flesh matter. We have to deal with this flesh for life. As long as we are breathing, we have the flesh to deal with. As important as these people are, our spouses, our parents, our church members, our people around us, we don't have to deal with them for life. That's the truth. As much as we, we say that this marriage is for life, you and I know that it is not for life. Practically speaking, that's the truth. Most couples will not leave the earth together. So most couples will end up one going before the other. So we don't, we don't, we, we don't, uh, 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 as wonderful as that union is, it comes to an end. But the flesh we have to deal with for life. It is both a friend, because we need the flesh. We need the flesh to stay here on earth. It is the earth suit that we have to stay here on earth. But it's also a foe. It's both a friend and a foe. Because it fights our spirit, the real man, the real us. The more we begin to get conscious of the fact that the real us is our spirit, the better for us. The more we would know that we have this flesh to deal with. When you say, oh, I, you know, <laughs> I asked that person, I said, you mean you slapped him? He said, he did this to me and so... I did this. I said, you mean you did that? Say, yes, pastor. I did that. It was not really her that did that. It was her flesh. The inward man always desires the things of God. That had been, that, ha that happened. But the, the, the inward man, the spirit man always craves for craves for the things of God and felt so bad 
what the, the deed had been done. Because the flesh is always against the spirit. Please, can we have the um, multimedia? Can you please give me the amplified classic, amplified classic of Galatians 5.17? Galatians 5.17. For the desire, thank you, for the desires of the flesh are opposed to the spirit, are opposed to the Holy Spirit. And the desires of the spirit are opposed to the flesh godless human nature that's what i wanted to see we carry about us 24 7 a godless human nature for these are antagonistic to each other continually withstanding and in conflict with each other continually so they are not free but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. First Peter 2, 11 also. Let, let us see that also. Thank you. Amplified also. Thank you. Beloved, I implore you as aliens and strangers and exiles in this world, to abstain from the sensual urges, the evil desires, the passions of the flesh, your lower nature, that wage war against the soul. There's a lower nature in every one of us. Every one of us born of a woman, we carry about, we have a lower nature of us. So you don't ever say, I can never do it. It's because you don't know how powerful the flesh is. And you, and you don't know how weak your spirit is without the Holy Ghost empowering you. We all can do it. That's the truth. That is why we are looking at dealing with the flesh. Matthew 24, 26, 41 says, Watch! and pray. Watch and pray. Watch even comes before pray. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Don't you realize how easy it is? Very easy to sit down and just about nonsense and how so difficult it is to sit down and pray. I mean, that, that alone should let, let us know that the spirits, things of the spirit are very real. One can sit down and talk about rubbish and gossip and you say, ah, ah, I, didn't, I didn't know that, that time had gone, one hour had gone. But sit down to pray you keep looking at the clock. Ah, it's not, I, I thought it was, ah, is this, is this it five minutes? Is, is that clock working? Is it not, I don't know whether it happened to you before. I've checked. Is the clock not working? It's working. It's because it is, it's a spiritual exercise. We can't live victoriously without overcoming the flesh, period. We cannot. We cannot. We've read Matthew 26, 41. Let us read Hebrews 4, 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hallelujah. He, can, he alone can help us because he went through without sin. He conquered the flesh. He took charge. And you can only give what you have. It is not by braggado faith. It is not by gym, gym, prayer and fasting. It is by yielding to him who has conquered the flesh. Jesus Christ conquered without sin. He was, at, he was in all points tempted as we are. It is part of all there is to this world. It is part of all there is to this world. 
1 John 2, 15 to 17. Can we just have that in Amplified also? 1 John 2, thank you, 15 to 17. Do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. I mean, some, God's word is so, it's so absolute. You cannot, I mean, there's no other way to interpret what has been said than what we have just read in any language. Verse 16. Thank you. For all that is in the world, all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, craving for sensual gratification, and the loss of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources, or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world itself. So all that is in the world can be put under the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh. No, let's just go back there a bit. Thank you. Cravings for sensual gratification. Cravings for just to just what will satisfy, what just makes me feel good. You say, uh, why did you do this? I just, I, just, I just want it. Our bodies just want it. I just like it. I, it just makes me feel good. Lost of the flesh. Lost of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, greedy longings. There's no end to it. You know, somebody gave me something very, very beautiful. And I said, ah, I think I have enough of this, this thing. Let me just allow it to just, let me, let it go and serve somebody else or something. And then I saw someone with something like that. And it was, it, was, it was as though I had I I I saw it in a different way again. So I told my husband, I said that night, I said I've changed my mind though. I I want that thing again. I want it. He just smiled. And I told myself, I said, Igwe, it is just greed that is worrying you. Greed. You know, th there's nothing as wonderful as talking to yourself. Oh. If you judge yourself, you will not be judged. I say it's greed that is worrying you, Oju Kokoro. Take your eyes off it. You have already given it out before. Why are you going to say, okay, I changed my mind? And the pride of life, wanting power, wanting, you know, to be to to be to be, to be recognized, to be reckoned with me. You know, I want to, you know, I want to. Come and say it. I want to, you know, that, that's that's assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things, possessions. Thank you. I will suggest we don't lock all the windows, please. Just slide them because to, to not get too warm. Just slide them so the rain doesn't enter the church. But don't shut everything. Otherwise, there will be cool breeze outside and we'll be cool, we'll be. Hot here again. Thank you very much. Thank you. It impacts greatly on our afterlife and yet stays behind going nowhere. This flesh impacts greatly on our after on, on this life, this is in this life and even our afterlife, and yet stays behind going nowhere. Have you realized how I mean I, I, let me just use we women as an example. How, let me just use myself. I don't need look, look, looking for anybody else. How I can spend four hours looking for the best style of, 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 of hairdo. And I'm, re I'm re 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 ready to, to loosen it and begin all over again if it doesn't please me. And yet I cannot struggle for 40 minutes. I mean, for 40 minutes I'm struggling to pray.
you know, uh, uh, I was somewhere where a bride was being um, dressed up, makeup. And to me, I said, this thing is it's not too much because she was, she was, she's, she's, she's my, my close relation. But the more she was being dressed, the more she was looking to me like a stranger. I, yeah, this is, this is my, my niece now, but it doesn't look like her anymore. And so much money. Of course, those things cost a lot. And they put a fan close by. I said, is, is, will, will this fan be, be with you all through? You know, these days now, women carry this small fan around the place to be cooling the makeup. Because that makeup, with ordinary heat, it begins to... So all of these efforts, simple heat, you know, all of that effort of ours, just simple heat of Nigerian heat, thing will begin to come down. Talk less of when you now put water on it. You know, but we spend so many hours on it, hours on it. But this flesh is going nowhere. This flesh is what they put in the box to, to drop in any of the symmetries. It doesn't go anywhere with us. But it takes all of our time. It takes all of our time. The loss of the flesh. The pride of life. This one, I want this one. You know, sometimes I, I pass by some places and I see properties that are just lying fallow. And I, I, just, I just excite myself, just trying to, trying to imagine what could have transpired when they were building such properties. My, my, my father, he was a, a retired police, police um, officer, and he was a wise man. He had many children. So everywhere he, his investment was uh, properties. He had a lot of properties. And so he had a lot of investment in that. He had 15 of us to look after. And so he had to do that. So there was no break. Everybody had the best as much as he could. And when he was about to, to die, well, when he got into his late 70s, to, by his 80th birthday, my father started selling off all his properties. My mother was shouting. She would tell my uncle, tell everybody, talk to this man, no. Those who have children, don't sell property like this. You have children. How can you sell this one? How can you sell that one? My father said, I know what I'm doing. He sold everything and left behind six he said, these six, two are family property. It's for everybody. It belongs to nobody. One in Benin City, one in our hometown. Then he left four others. He said, these four, two are for your mom. Two are for your mom. My wives uses this to eat until you come and meet me over there. I'm settled. I've given all of you education. And we're was wondering, why, why this? But I have seen now the wisdom in that. I know people who were just, who are, because I see alive, just two children from the same mother. Not, not polygamous, so the same mother. There are two of them, and there are two of them are two ladies. You would think women will not fight, fight over property. The pride of life. I own this. You can't have this. You cannot have that. And the family is scattered because of property. It's all the flesh. It's all part of it. David lost no external or physical battle, but an internal and moral one. David, as wonderful as King David was, King David lost a moral battle. He fought wars. He so fought and so shed blood that God said, uh, 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 you, can't, you can't build a temple. You cannot. You are, you are a great guy. You are a great guy. You do all my will, but ah, this bloodshed. Oh, well, you, can't, you, can't, you can't build a temple. Let Sol Sol Solomon do it. That was how much he fought. He was a warrior, warrior. But he, 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 when it came to the issue of the flesh, 
he lost the battle. First Kings 15, 4 to 5 gives a very nice summary of David's life. Nevertheless, for David's sake, New King James now, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamb in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him and by establishing Jerusalem because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he was command, that was commanded him all the days of his life except uh -huh, the flesh stained his testimony except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Remember when, when Nathan was even trying to tell David that story. David said, that man must die. Because that, was not, that is not David. But the flesh brought him down. Proverbs 7, 26. We don't have that in our outline. You can just put it down for the sake of study next time. Proverbs 7, 26. He says, for she has cast down many wounded. Talking about the adulterous woman or sexual sin, or the flesh, and all who were slain by her were who? Strong men. All that were slain by her were strong men. Not just people. People who were supposed to be strong. They were slain. They were brought down. The subject is relevant to all. It's relevant to all of us. It's relevant to all of us. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned. All of us. We have sinned and we came short of the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.13 No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God will always bring a way of escape. But that you will not be tempted, forget it. That is why we are looking at dealing with the flesh. That haven't run this race and haven't set our, our hands on the plow. That is why I will be the last person to join anyone to hear stories of somebody who fell. <laughs> Scriptural usage. Scriptural usage. When I was going through this teaching, like you may have already um, un understood, most of these teachings were written by our pastor and some were written by other uh, pastors also. But like I said, pastor took this teaching and um, now put it into print. And when I was preparing for this, I said, huh, teacher, teacher, teacher. You know, you know, a teacher goes to the roots of issues, you know, to, to make things clear. And so we are beginning with scriptural usage. Because all through scripture you see flesh, 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 flesh. They don't, they all, they mean different things. So we are, we are, this is a, this is a teaching that we must not miss for, for, for anything if we want to be able to live victorious Christian lives. The term flesh is used in many different ways in scriptures. Many different ways. The term flesh. And as we go on, it will be narrowed down to where we are going. It is used to mean human being or mankind. Just human being. The flesh, human being. Joel 2.28 And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On all human beings. Matthew 16.17 Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. That flesh and blood is talking about 
it is not your human nature. It is, it, it, it is, it is, it is not as a, as, a, as a human being that this has been revealed to you. It's also used in scriptures to mean living thing or creature. Living thing or creature. Genesis 6, 13. And it shall come to pass afterwards. No, I'm reading Joel. Genesis 6. Think, okay. Genesis 6, 13. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. The end of all flesh. Flesh there is talking about the end of all living things. Living things. So we are seeing different ways in which the, the word flesh is used. One of the, one of the, one of the, 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 the best ways to learn what something is, is to learn what, what it is not. Because when you learn what it is not, you can never miss what it is. It's also used to mean creature, living things or creature. Look, let's look at Psalm 136 verse 25. This psalm, we read it very often during Thanksgiving or praise night. It says, who gives food to all flesh? Who gives food to all living things, to all creatures? Not the flesh of the godly human nature. Number three, it could also mean a relative or a kindred or family or race when the word flesh is used as, uh, to mean a relative or kindred or family. In Judges 9.2, Judges 9.2, that was um, Abimelech. He was speaking there and he said, please speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, which is better for you, that all 70 sons of Jerubal reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember that I am your own flesh and blood, that I am your own family. King David also used that when he was speaking in 2 Samuel 19, after he, um, he was chased out of the kingdom by his son Absalom, after Absalom, Absalom was killed, he said this in 2 Samuel 19, 11. So King David went to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? Since the words of all Israel have come to the king, to his very house, you are my brethren, you are my bone and my flesh. Why then are you the last to bring back the king? You are my family. You are my family members. So we're looking at how the word flesh is used in diff I mean different things in scriptures. So we, we don't, we don't get, get confused. The, the, the word flesh also is used to mean body, just body. Proverbs 4.22 For they are life to those who find them, talking about God's word, and health to all their flesh, to all their body. is health to our body. Flesh is dead, used to mean body. The same way it is used in Ephesians 5.29 it says, for no one ever hated his own flesh, his own body, but nourishes and cherishes, cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So we are members of the body of Christ. The word flesh used to mean that. The word flesh also is used in scriptures to also mean skin. Skin. Second Kings 5, 10 to 14. 
And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. Talking about Naaman, Naaman the leper. He said, go and wash in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the pool and your flesh shall be restored to you. Flesh here doesn't mean ungodly human nature. He's talking about skin, just skin, your skin. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. At the, at the Abana and the Parfa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of, I don't know, better than all the waters of Israel. Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh, his skin was restored like the flesh, like the skin of a little child, and he was clean. So flesh them means skin. Also, flesh is used in scriptures to mean meat, just meat. Animal food, just meat. Genesis 9, 4. But you shall not eat flesh with its life. That is its blood. You will not eat the meat with the life. The same thing we see in Exodus 12, 8. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, talking about the night of Passover, you shall eat the flesh, the meat. That's just what it just means there. Simple. Just meat. Also in scriptures, the word flesh is also used to mean genitals. Genesis 17, 11. And you shall be, be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. Just simply means genitals. Number eight, it could also mean physical domain. Physical domain, rather than spiritual. Physical domain. Ephesians 6 5. Born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling, according to the flesh. So these are your masters in the physical domain. Is your boss in the physical domain. Not, not spiritually, but physically. So be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. So the, the word flesh also was, is used in scriptures just to mean physical domain. I mean, this is, this is so deep because we are trying to have a foundation to understand that, yes, we're talking about dealing with the flesh, but this flesh means so, so many other things. In scriptures and we're trying to sieve out where we are going Colossians 2 1 for I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh you have not seen me physically that's all what that was just all what I, the apostle was saying you have not seen me physically you've only heard about me but you have not seen me in the flesh. It could also mean docile, compliant, or tender. It's also used, used to mean that in scriptures. Docile, compliant, or tender. 
Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will give you a tender heart. That stony heart will be removed. I will give you a heart of flesh. Just simply meaning a tender heart, tenderness, tender. You see why I said this teacher was written, written by teacher teachers. I would never have thought, I mean, of, of <laughs> going as deep as this, you know. Sometimes when we mention some topics that we have taken in church, for Sundays on end, I say, wow. I mean, it's, it's, it, thank God for the giftings of God in, in, our, in, in our midst. And that's why I say to whom much is given, much is expected, that you and I are having to uh, go through this uh, Bible school. Bible school. Number 10, it could also mean human effort, human effort, flesh, just human effort. Second Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh. Hallelujah. With him is just an arm of human effort. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God's word is so powerful. God's word is so powerful. Sometimes I'm just alone and I feel like screaming. You know? I just feel like screaming. I mean, I understand why when the Bible talks, talks about it's, it's, it's more than rubies. It's more than gold. Let's look at Jeremiah 17, 5 to 8. Thus says the Lord, Cost is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord, who makes human effort his strength. And he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. Hallelujah. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out his roots by the river, and shall not fear when heat comes, but his leaf shall be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Verse 5 tells it, says, Cost is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Makes human effort his strength. Makes human effort his, his strength. I once heard somebody say, Oh, I have to use those drugs because they will keep me alive. And where I was, I just shook my head and said, no, that's not, what, that's, not, that's not what will keep you alive. That's not what will keep you alive. It is the grace of God that will keep you alive. One of my sisters was talking about something and she has, she, she has an American um, passport, but she lives in Nigeria. And she was telling me, he said, oh, Bridget, she's my older sister. I said, well, let us be thanking God for his grace. It's true that I have American passports, but it is God's grace keeping me alive. She, she was able to, 
name for me one, two, three people that she knew very well who had all those things. Say, in, in the day of trouble, this one cannot keep you. you know, because some of us think that, oh, if, if I can but just get a green card, I'm made. If I can just reach America, I'm made. It's the grace of God. And thank God, because that grace is the same currency. It's faith that operates that grace. Whether in, whether in Yemetu or Jah. Or in uh, Chicago, is grace that is keeping. Hallelujah. It could mean human nature, just carnal, sinful, carnal, sinful nature. And I believe that that is where we are going. That's really where we are going. The carnal, sinful nature. Let's look at. Uh, in Psalm 51, 1 to 5, that was where uh, David was in, in repentance. Let's look at um, Romans 6, 19. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Because of the weakness of your human nature. Because of the weakness of your human, godless, the way I'm prepared to put it, godless human nature. That's really where we are going. But we have tried to eliminate others so we can really, really see where we are going. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit... I think I've exceeded where, where I'm, I'm, I'm going now. But that's, that, that, is, that is just the point. Is that this flesh that we are really, that we are really focusing on is... is our human nature, our carnal, sinful nature. Can we look at Galatians 5, 16? I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh loss against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish, but you are led. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like. So it is an endless list, and the like. Flesh has destroyed so many believers. Tongue-talking, demon-casting. The flesh has destroyed so many homes. The flesh has, uh, has put nations at war. It is human to lie, to vacillate, to be inconsistent, to disappoint, to fail. Numbers 23, 19 says to us, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not, will he not, will he not do? Has he spoken? Will he not make good? But the point there is that God is not a man that he should lie. So we are men. And we do lie. We are men. We can fail. We can disappoint. So, so there is that godless nature in us. Selfishness, greed, loss for sex, for food, for alcohol, for whatever. Envy, pride. They are natural. These things are natural. And they cling to us, to the, to the natural man. 
Thank God that we are in Christ. So we are a new creation. That's where we are going, church. We are a new creation. We are a new creation. Can we see 2 Corinthians 5, 17? We we'll close there. In the Amplified, please. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation. A new crea creature altogether. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Will it happen in a day? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Is it easy? No. That is why we are going to spend some Thursdays to talk about dealing with the flesh. And even when we say the grace at the end of those teachings, it has just started. Hallelujah. It has just started. It has just started. It has just started. But the, the victory is that we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the victory. That's the victory. That's the victory. That's the victory. That is the victory. And because of that, we can deal with the flesh. We can grow. We can say, oh, last year, ah, if you, if you met me last year, I would have cut off your head if, if you did this to me. But it is the same me now who is begging policeman for you. If you had seen me, you know, we are, we are all growing. We are all work in progress. That is the beauty of the Christian life. That's the beauty of the Christian life. Can we just give God thanks for these teachings that you and I are privileged to hear, privileged to be taught these things. A woman heard Jesus Christ preach and she said, blessed are the breasts that you sucked because she was so overwhelmed by gracious words that came from his mouth. The same words that we are hearing today and we will hear for some Thursdays and for the rest of our lives. These words are gracious words and you and I we will trade with these words and we will show forth the beauty of God's power and God's spirit in us because we shall deal with the flesh. Let's just give God thanks.